Hey guys, guess who wants to talk to us since I loaded the save state? Yep, it's younger Joe, youngster Joey, sorry. Anyway, this is uh, the whole top percentage ratata thing, uh, which the internet meme comes from. So, if you've never played this game for whatever reason, then you've seen it for yourself, you know where the meme comes from. So, on the top floor of the department store, other than the lottery, there is something very interesting to take note of. We got here vending machines, which sell fresh water, soda pop, and lemonade. Fresh water heals as much as, as a super potion, but it costs less than a regular potion. Soda pop costs as much as a potion, but it heals more than a super potion. And the lemonade is the most cost-effective healing item in the entire game. Though Moo Moo Milk comes rather close. And I guess max potions on high-level blissies or chances or whatever. Anyway, we're back in the, the basement because some of you told me that I gotta wait for this guy. There we go to look at this macho in order for it to push the box. So what we got here, we got a nether. Not too bad. But as I said, if you're looking for cost-effective items for healing, you you definitely want to hunt down those. Uh, vending machines, and it's not just in this game, it's in any game. There are a lot of them in black and white, so I suggest uh, always bringing some lemonades with you. Of course, I didn't buy any because I'm just awesome like that. I don't use items very much anyway before the Elite Four, at least. So, now that we're done with the department store, we're gonna check out the remainder of Goldenrod City. Here we got the Pokemon Center, which I already entered a few times, but I didn't talk to the NPCs. So, that's what I'm gonna do right now. And, <laughs> yeah, basically, he's talking about how new species keep popping up with every game. Well, he's not mentioning the games themselves, but it's true that there are more and more Pokémon being added every four years or so. And yeah, it's true that there isn't a single Pokémon that's the toughest, but... Uh, whoop -a whoa, 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 whoa! Did a little mistake there, forgot about that NPC all the way in the corner over there. He actually blended sort of well with the whole scenery, so... I, I, I imagine I would have gotten a crap ton of comments how I not talk to him, but whatever. As I was about to say, though, being number one in Ubers pretty much means that you're, by default, practically better than everything else, and right now that Pokémon would be Arceus, what else? Oh, next is the Game Corner, the Super Duper Censored Game Corner! In the Japanese version, it looked the exact same as in uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal. However, in uh, the international releases, all you got is that uh, Voltorb flip game, which is like a, a cross between uh, between uh, Sudoku and Minesweeper. And here I'm showing you the prizes that you can learn. The TMs are especially interesting since this is where uh, you can buy Flamethrower, Ice Beam, and uh, Thunderbolt. And this guy's name is Mr. Game, yet another NPC that got a really, really, really crappy name. Come on, N sounds more badass than this, Mr. Game, God. But anyway, the problem with this particular game corner is that since you can't lose coins, they took out the option to buy them. So, basically, if you want one of those TMs, you gotta play this for hours on end. And while I admit that this is the best uh, Game Corner minigame ever, the durations you need to play this game for to get those TMs are simply out of this world. Oh, oh, by the way, this is Bill's house, and Bill being the Pokemon computer expert thingy. Anyway, uh, we're gonna meet him in a critique, as his mom uh, just said, so we can't uh, really meet him just yet. He's gonna give us an Eevee if we come back here after we meet him for the first time in a critique. Anyway, uh, this place here leads to an underground passageway of sorts. And seeing that Meryl must mean right on cue, yep, Lyra was just there, so what does she want now? She's getting annoying, you know, just popping up, saying a few things, and leaving. It's just like Cynthia. Uh, but actually, she actually gives you some stuff uh, whenever she meets you, but um, even though this is pretty much useless, it's the fashion case, which 
that you can use to equip accessories on your Pokemon, but since there are no contests in this game, it's just for taking pictures. Which is even more useless than in Diamond Pearl Platinum, so I'm never ever going to bother with that. And as she's saying, um, there are trainers down there, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna go down there quite yet, I'm gonna wait until I have a decently leveled Zubat with me. Because um yeah, once I'm done exploring this town I'm going I'm going to actually go forward and uh, breed that Zubat. Anyway, still more buildings to explore, and which one is this one? I think it's the Magnet train station, though I can't... Yeah, that's it. Uh, I was about to say, I can't really tell because there are so many major buildings in this city. So basically, this is where the Magnet train is supposed to pass. It's basically a way to travel between Kanto and Johto. Once you've been to Kanto and you've done some, some stuff to reactivate the Magnet train, which is, by the way, is why it hasn't come in because it's been deactivated and it's stuck in saffron. But, um, anyway, moving on. There was not much to do there. And here's that rocket grunt again. So we're going to be leaving him to stare at uh, the radio tower for another five or six months, just like in Crystal. But, uh, anyway, this is the radio tower... Uh, we can do some things there. M most important is getting the radio card expansion for the Poke Gear. This here is the lottery corner, which I believe is the exact same as in the Jubilife TV building in Sinnoh. So, well, you know, why not? It doesn't hurt to check it out, though I'm not going to be coming here very diligently. Okay, 60456, let's see if we got anything. Nope, nothing. Anyway, um, just gonna check. Sales in the radio tower? Um, well, that doesn't make much sense, but anyway, a special quiz campaign. You want to talk to this woman if you want to get the radio card. Uh, she's going to ask you five questions, and if you get them all right, you get the radio card. And you have an infinite number of tries, so don't worry too much about it if you mess it up. First question. Uh -huh, yes, of course. So, here we go. Second question now. Duh! Hello! Those are easy. Apricots? No. Apricorns, not apricots. It's really easy to fall in that trap. Yes, Magic Card doesn't learn any TNs. It does get the Bounce Tutor, though. Mary? No, Mary with a Y, not an IE. And I loved how there was that little one second pause, like to build up suspense or something. But anyway, now that this is done, we actually got the radio card. And meet Whitney, the local gym leader. And, uh,. Reputedly the hardest boss in the entire series. But yeah, as I was saying, that third question, it's really, really easy to fall for it. So, now that this is done, uh, what is she going to say? Well, please tune into our radio show as well. How about we do so right now? I'm going to show you how the radio works. Uh, basically, um, there's this little cursor at the center of the screen that basically you need to be at the exact spot to not have any interference. So, I'm just going to show you this is another program. But uh, if you want to listen to the actual programs, you want to click on those four buttons uh, at each corner. If you want to, if you want to be taken straight to the spot where the programs are. Okay, so this is Pokemon Marsh. March, not Marsh, which increases the encounter rate whenever you have it playing. Trainer profiles. This is um, basically giving you clues as to what type of. Uh, what type of trainer he's thinking, that's a sailor, that must be twins, because, well, there aren't many trainer classes where there are two. Okay, so this is the worst radio show in the universe! Reloaded! Yeah, basically it's the same thing as in Gold, Silver, Crystal. Professor Oak tells you where to find certain Pokémon, and Mary says randomly generated sentences that don't make any bit of sense. Ursa Ring may be seen around Mount Silver Cave. Ursa Ring. Whether you see them above or below, you'll be admired by all. See what I mean? Makes no sense whatsoever. Now this channel. What's on it depends on the time of day. The only interesting thing about it is that at 2, 5, 8, and 11, both a.m. and p.m., Buena's Password is on for an hour. Yep, Buena's Password comes back 
from uh, Crystal, but it works very, very differently, sadly. Uh, I already mentioned the fact that uh, you had several time frames per day in order to participate, but there is also something that makes Buena a lot less interesting than she was in Crystal. Gonad, what have you done to my beloved Buena? What were you thinking, you bastard? If I if I get my hands on you, I'm gonna. I'm gonna anyway, Buena's on the next floor, so let's go check it out. I guess. Basically, what happens is that uh, you're given a blue card, just like in Crystal, and when you get um, the, the right password, you get a point. However, you don't use those points to buy items at your leisure anymore. Instead, the way it works is that uh, whenever you reach a certain amount of points on your blue card, you're automatically given an item. And whenever you reach 30 points, which is, um, well, the final item, uh, your issue, uh, this blue card is crapped and you're given an entirely new blue card. What this means is that you can only get one of each type of item that uh, this game has to offer in quite a long time. So... If you remember in Crystal, I used her to buy a rare candy every three days, and that's how I grinded in order to make my levels decent for the final fight against Red. But now I can't even do that, so yeah, th th this is going to be a really challenging fight once I get to it this time around, because Buena's not here to bail me out anymore. And uh, as of this recording, we're not quite at 1 p.m., so Buena's password show isn't on, as you just saw. Uh, so I'm going to show it to you once whenever I get around to it, maybe in the next part. But anyway, we, we can't get up there quite yet. We're only going to be able to get up there a lot later in the game, though. So we don't have to worry about exploring that part of the building for now. So, other than uh, the radio tower, afterwards we got the global terminal. Now you may be surprised to hear that I will not be covering it in this LP. Why is that? Well, as you may remember, we had the same uh, building in Platinum, and they barely changed the dialogue at all. It's functionally identical, and the dialogue is almost the same, with a few words changed here and there, so I'm not going to waste your time with that. But if you really want to see what's inside, I'm going to refer you to part 10 of my Platinum LP, because, as I said, it's the exact same thing right down to the freaking dialogue. Anyway, this woman is the one who rates my Pokémon's happiness. Of course, Gengar isn't very happy right now because it was just involved in a couple trades in order to evolve it, and when you trade a Pokémon, its happiness gets reset to its original value, which would be, in this case, 70. So, down here, we got the bike shop, which is where you obtain a bike, and you don't even have to pay a penny for it because, well, as you see, the shop is off the beaten path, to say the least. So no one's coming to see his shop, and so he's going to ask me to ride his bike to make for good advertisement. And at some point in the future, he's going to call me on the... the on the, the Poke Gear and tell me that ever since I started riding his bike, people have been flocking to, uh, to his shop, and that's basically how you uh, get the bike. So I'm gonna register it to the Y button, which is um, the C button on my keyboard. Fun fact about my keyboard setup. Anyway, let's try it out, and... No, I didn't want to go inside! God. <laughs> this bike re really, really uh, handles differently from other bikes in the series. And in fact, I think I've already said it a few times, in every single game, the bike seems to handle a bit differently. Like they, 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 no, they can't just copy-paste the game code. Anyway, this is the name raider where I already had to come here in order to uh, remove the Japanese name from uh, Gengar when it was traded. As I explained before, no, I'm not going to bother rating it because the only function is to change 
the nicknames. He always says, oh, it's good, but we can do better every single time. And this is the other entrance to the underground passageway. Nothing of interest in the, the building itself except for an NPC. So we're almost out of time. So next time we're going to finish off the exploration of Goldenrod City and we're going to breed ourselves a brand new Hypnosis Zubat.